what are the exogenous forces to exchange rate? So we will give you four examples. First one is the state of the world economy, which means the performance of the economy of your neighboring countries. If they have higher average income, higher output, or they go into recession. Then the state of your domestic economy. Here we talk about in Australia, so we talk about Australian economy because we analyze it from the perspective of Australia. The third example is the relative inflation rate, which is the inflation rate in your country in Australia compared to another country. And interest rate differential, which is the interest rate in Australia compared to the interest rate of another country. So let's take it one by one and let's see what will happen to our demand and supply of the currency. So let's talk about the rising of wallet income or your neighboring country. If your neighboring country start to have a higher GDP, higher income, so what will happen? So I'll say that we have a higher Y star. A star, it refers to our foreign country or neighboring country or wallet income. So here we talk about our neighboring countries. They start to have a higher income. So if they start to get higher income, what will happen for our neighboring country? They need to consume more. Let's assume China. If China start to have a higher income, this means that the Chinese they need to consume more. So we'll have a higher C star. This means that the neighboring country need to consume more. How's you gonna consume more? It means that they need to import a lot from their neighbors. Australia is the neighbor of China. So this means that it means that we will export more to China. So here X only, it refers to Australia because they don't have a star. Therefore, we need to export more to China. Remember that exports is inflow or outflow. It's inflow. So inflow it affects the demand or supply, it affects the demand. So higher exports, it means higher inflow. It means that we have a higher demand. What do we mean by higher demand? Shift to the right. Therefore, we're going to shift the demand curve for Australian dollars to the right. And I'll write it here as D2. Remember why demand curve shifts because this is inflow. It means that Chinese would like to buy more Australian dollar in order to buy more goods and services. So now look at the new equilibrium point, which is the point of intersection between our new demand curve and the supply curve here. I will go down. It will give me here my new quantity, my new equilibrium quantity and a new equilibrium exchange rate. Look here. What happened to the exchange rate? It increased. Remember, this graph is for indirect quotation. So if the exchange rate goes up, it means that we have Australian dollar appreciation. The value of Australian dollar will go up. Let's talk about the second force. A strong income growth in the domestic economy, in Australian economy. So if Australia will have a higher output, higher income, this means that we need to consume more in Australia. How are we going to consume more? We need to import more from where we'll import from our neighboring countries, from foreign countries, from the rest of the world. So this means that our imports will be higher. If our imports will be higher, we know that imports are outflow. So higher imports, it means higher outflow. Outflow affects supply. So this means that we'll have higher supply. Higher supply, it means shift to the right. Therefore, we're going to shift our supply curve for Australian dollar to the right, S2 AED. Look at the point of intersection between our new supply curve and the demand curve here. We will go down in order to get our equilibrium quantity. We will go horizontal in order to get our equilibrium exchange rate. Remember that here we use indirect quotation. Therefore, the value of the currency will go down. If we have a lower exchange rate, it means that we have Australian dollar depreciation. Let's talk about the third example. A rise in interest rates in Australia relative to other countries, which we call it interest rate differential. So this means that if we have a higher interest rate differential, which means the Australian interest rate minus foreign interest rate. What does it mean? It means that we have two forces. What are the two forces? Foreigners would like to come and invest in Australia. They would like to put their money in Australia to benefit from a higher return. Therefore, we'll have a higher cash inflow. At the same time, Australians are not willing to take their money away from Australia. So what will happen to the cash outflow? Cash outflow will decrease. Therefore, cash inflow refers to inflow. So this means that we'll have higher inflow. Inflow, it affects the demand. Therefore, we'll have higher demand. What do you mean by higher demand? We'll shift the demand curve to the right. At the same time, we have lower cash outflow. Cash outflow, it means outflow. Outflow affects supply curve. So we'll have lower supply curve. What do you mean by lower supply curve? 
shift to the left. Therefore, every time we talk about interest rate differential, it means that it will impact both demand and supply curve of the currency. In our example here, Australian dollar. Therefore, we're going to shift our demand curve to the right, and this will be our D2, and then we will shift our supply curve to the left, S2. Then we will get our new equilibrium point, which is the intersection between the new supply curve and the new demand curve at this point. And we will get here in this example, Q2 is the same as Q1, and then we'll move horizontally, we'll get our new exchange rate, which is S2. Here we use indirect quotation in our graph. So here the value of the currency will go up. If the value of the currency, if exchange rate goes up, it means that we have Australian dollar appreciation. Remember in this graph, I have an equal shift between supply and demand, but maybe we could have different shift, which means demand could have a bigger shift compared to supply or supply has a bigger shift compared to demand. This will affect only the quantity, but it will not affect exchange rate. And that's why it doesn't matter that you should draw the three graphs. One graph is enough. Our last example is a rise in the Australian inflation rate relative to other countries, which means what will happen if inflation rate in Australia will be higher compared to our neighboring countries, other countries. So this means that if inflation rate goes up, it means that our prices will be higher. If our prices will be higher, it means that our domestic goods will be relatively more expensive. If our domestic goods are relatively more expensive, our exports will decrease. What will happen to the foreign goods? It will be relatively cheaper. Therefore, our imports will be higher. Remember that exports is inflow or outflow, it's inflow. So lower inflow, it means lower demand. What do you mean by lower demand? Shift to the left. Imports, it means outflow. So higher outflow, it means outflow affects supply. So it means higher supply. Higher supply, it means shift to the right. Therefore, we're going to shift the demand curve to the left. And here it will be D2 of Australian dollar. And then we'll shift supply curve to the right. So this will be our S2. I assume that we have equal shift between supply and demand. Look at the point of intersection between the new demand curve and new supply curve here. So this will give us the same quantity. And if we move horizontally, we'll get our new exchange rate, our new equilibrium exchange rate S2. Remember, in this graph, we use indirect quotation, not direct quotation. Therefore, here, what will happen? The value of Australian dollar will go down. If the value of Australian dollar go down, it means that we have Australian dollar depreciation. By the way, since I assume that demand and supply will have equal shift, we could have demand curve has a bigger shift compared to supply curve, or supply curve has a bigger shift compared to demand curve. This will affect only the quantity, but it will not affect the exchange rate. Exchange rate will always depreciate in this example. And that's why one graph is enough. You don't need to draw three graphs.